how to draw proper ellipses. These ellipses aren't that bad, but the problem with the ellipses is that you're sketching them. You need to read my ellipse guide because I explain this. So first of all, when you construct an ellipse in a plane, it's not a perfect circle in perspective because we have to approximate it with like four points, eight points, 12 points, 18 points, or 24 points. We have to approximate it. So it's not even accurate in perspective. The reality is that you want to use a geometric ellipse, not perspective ellipses in almost every case. The only case where you would want to use a perspective ellipse is if you had an extreme perspective and then the ellipse, you wanted it to distort. You usually don't want that. You, you decide the width, right? This is called the major axis. If the ellipse is lying on the ground, it's always going to be horizontal. Then you, halfway through this ellipse, you find the center point and you are going to decide now what the degree of the ellipse is. So how, how fat is it? How tall is it? Okay, so you have a top of a cup, right? Put it right in front of your eyes until it looks like a flat line. Do you see that? Okay, now drop it, but don't move your eyes. Just drop it. Do you see how it starts to open up and become more like a circle? Okay, now raise it the other way. And if it's clear, you can look through the bottom. Do you see how the same thing happens? That works not only up and down and left and right, but it works in all angles relative to the center of vision. Imagine just a little point in the middle of your head. So if you take any circle and you move it around, up, down, left, right, it's gonna change its degree. And if you were to move it in two axes, so let's say you have your cup here, and so it's pretty much level with the ground. So as you drop it, it looks just like these ellipses you, you've drawn because they're all horizontal ellipses, right, when you drop it. Well, if you were to start to tilt it, that major axis, the long line, the longest part of the ellipse is going to start turning too. So all you actually need is the major axis and then the minor axis. When you're doing something like this, you're gonna observe it. Well, how tall does the ellipse look versus how wide? So you're just looking at it, right? So you're like, okay, this is an ellipse here. It's this wide and it's this tall. You see that? That's all the information you need from observation to construct the same ellipse over here. So you're like, okay, it's, it's this wide and let's say it's this tall, right? This is important. It's gotta be the same measurement here as here. So geometric ellipses, true ellipses, every quadrant's identical. That's really convenient for us. It's really convenient for us. So once we decide how tall it is, all we have to do is go from this point to this point, to this point, to this point. Look, this is what we don't wanna do. We don't want to make it pointy like in American football. Like that, do you see that? That's a common error. We don't want to make them like hot dogs or sausages, so we don't want them to be like that. Do you see this problem? These are common ellipse problems. What we want to do is we want to have a nice continuous curvature all the way through. So if it goes from here to here, we want to, and you don't have to, look, you don't have to sketch it. You just have to construct it. And then once we do that, we just visually check to make sure that each of these quadrants are the same. So it's not about doing some perfect performance. That's a silly way to think about ellipses. And unfortunately, that's the most common way people think about ellipses today. But look, that's all there is to an ellipse. So ellipses are not about a perfect performance. Ellipses are about perfect construction. And perfect construction just means you just do it until it's right. That's all. They're not this big nightmare that everybody makes them into. So they need to be symmetrical. Well, that doesn't mean they're, they're perfect though, because maybe here it could maybe have a little more here and I can do the same thing here. So all you have to do to get a perfect ellipse is to construct a perfect ellipse. You just remember those rules and then you make sure that those rules are obeyed. And you can do it lightly and then you can get darker. You never in your career are going to have to do, you know, you never have to do this. This is not a thing that you have to do. You don't have to do that. You just build it and make sure it follows the rules. And that's a perfect ellipse. That's all you have to do. And so the more careful you are, the better. And there are tricks like you could fold your paper. If you folded your paper down this line, if you were doing a practice sheet, you could fold your paper along this line, fold it, and then look through it and make sure they align. That's all it takes to do an ellipse. So there are sketching ellipses that we teach in some contexts, but at this stage where you are, for FODAP and for where you're at, you don't need to sketch ellipses. You need to just construct proper ellipses. So I don't care if you built the birdhouse in the dark with your eyes closed with a blindfold or in the workshop with the tools. I just want the birdhouse to be right. 
That's all you need to worry about right now. And then later when you get into specific applications like industrial design sketching or specific applications like you're doing maybe a wheelbase with lots of ellipses that have to overlap in a certain way and you want it to have perspective, even so, I know the best artists at perspective in the world, like Craig Atterbury and Eric Olson and my teacher, the late Gary Meyer, the best guys who, who, who taught everybody. And those perspective experts will always use a geometric ellipse over a perspective ellipse. None of them are gonna use a perspective ellipse because the perspective ellipse inherently looks wrong unless it's right in the middle of the cone of vision. It has to do with the limitations of perspective. I can't get into the whole thing. It has to do with human perception, but it has to also do with the fact that perspective is not realistic. The ways in which it's not realistic deform spheres and, and circles and ellipses. And so almost always, you're gonna to wanna to use the kind of ellipse I just taught you. Go to the ellipse guide, you're gonna learn all about this. It's all in there.